Hey guys, James again for TFB TV, and today we've got the piston-fired Ruger SR762. Uh, this is an extension. Obviously, it's the 308 or 762 NATO version of the SR556. Um, I was thinking earlier today about how Ruger used to not even make ARs, and now, I mean, they're, they're just coming up with hit after hit after hit. Um, this one's pretty well equipped. Um, comes with three Magpul mags, nice carrying case. And it, it just feels good. I mean, it just feels like a uh, like a good rifle. It's got an adjustable uh, adjustable piston system, as I'll show you a little bit later, where uh, you can run it. You know, you can gas it up, you can gas it down, whatever you need to do at that time. You're shooting a suppressor, you're shooting, you know, unlubricated dirty gun. Um, you can adjust that, and that's a, a, an essential feature in a piston-fired gun because it's kind of like if you can't adjust the gas, you know, what's the point? So let's fire this thing up. The Ruger comes with a ton of features right out of the box. To begin with, it's got a chrome-plated two-stage piston with an adjustable regulator. It has a chrome-lined cold hammer-forged mil-spec 41V45 barrel. The barrel is actually fluted under the handguards to reduce weight. It features 5 8 by 24 threads, so you can add some muzzle devices, a chrome-plated bolt and chrome-plated bolt carrier. The stock uses a mil-spec buffer tube. It has folding front and rear iron sights, which I initially thought were Troy, but apparently, according to Ruger, they're Samson manufacturer. It also has a very nice smooth-sided, lightweight, adaptable handguard. It has Picatinny rail that runs all along the 12 o'clock position, but the handguard's also drilled and tapped for additional rails at 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock. Ruger includes a couple extra pieces of rail as well as finger groove rail covers. It comes with a Hogue monogrip pistol grip. Ruger's spec sheet says that this comes with the Ruger Elite 452 two-stage trigger that offers a smooth, crisp, four and a half pound trigger pull. This trigger was hands down one of the shittiest that I have felt on an AR in a long time. And in fact, that may be Spoiler alert, my only gripe about the Ruger. The Ruger's overall length is just short of 35 inches with the stock fully collapsed and 38 inches with it fully extended. It has a barrel length of 16.12 inches. It weighs 8.6 pounds. The barrel has a one and 10 inch right hand twist. The steel parts are phosphate coated while the aluminum components are hard coat anodized. Fire ready. Nice. That's a good start. Recoil, very mild. Uh, I think the gas piston setting's on two right now. It's uh, pretty mild. Let's go shoot for that, that medium target. Smoke it. Fuck me. This thing's fucking awesome. Alright, now where's the little guy? Okay, so it's just to the right. It's all black there. Oh yeah. Oh god. A size. God, can barely even see it. So I just shot a few more five round groups with this gun and using uh, some 175 grain boat tail, I believe it's the Eagle Eye. I've got a picture of it that I'll put up right now. But using that, I just threw down two four round groups that were under an inch and a half. And one of those included a three inch group that was about 0.9 inches. So that's pretty impressive, especially considering uh, that this gun kind of has a diarrhea trigger. It's, it's a pretty shitty trigger. Uh, I just measured it with the, uh, with the little lime in here, and uh, it's coming in at between nine and a half and, uh, and a tick over 10 pounds. To get four rounds in an inch and a half, three rounds in under an inch with a piston gun, I've got 20 mile per hour gusts and I'm shooting with $80 worth of glass. That's pretty damn good. Um, so, not bad, Ruger. 
One thing I really love about the SR762 is it's got a four position gas regulator. It starts from zero, which basically renders the gas system inoperable. So you can shoot it basically as a single shot for whatever reason. In my case, I like to keep the bolt closed if I'm shooting suppressed so you don't get any noise coming out of the chamber. Now, you can twist by hand, but this detent spring from the factory is actually really hard. Um, I find I can twist it to the left pretty easily, but it's got a hole in it so you can insert an object to get some leverage as needed. What I found is that by using this Allen key or a screwdriver um, and just twisting it a little bit, the more I did that, the, the detent spring started loosening up. I couldn't even hand adjust it right out of the box. But once I started messing with it, then it became easier to manipulate by hand. Let's have a little fun here, guys. Got the Yankee Hill Phantom Suppressor, 308 suppressor on the front of this thing. Um, I'm gonna start off at the manufacturer's recommended setting of two and I'm gonna fire off a few rounds. Then I'm gonna dial it back to zero, totally shut off the gas system, and see if it's any quieter. Let's check it out. I think it's hearing safe, let's see. Yeah, it's definitely hearing safe. You can shoot it without ears with the suppressor on, but I gotta tell you, ugh. Once you throw the suppressor on there, it really does start to kick. So, why don't we dial it down to zero? Well, we'll start with one. How about that? Start with one, see if that's any better. Definitely better. Um, still got a little bit more kick than it ought to. But, I mean, it's really not that bad. We are talking 308 after all. Let me dial it down to zero, see how much quieter it is. Like I said earlier in the video, it's getting a lot easier. The more you twist that dial, the more you kind of break it in. It's getting a lot easier to tweak. Not really sure if that was much quieter. I, I couldn't tell from where I'm shooting. I guess it's a little bit like the wire. I'm still picking up a little crack. And that spent round really does not want to play. Might have to butt stroke this thing. Yep. the first time I've stroked a butt since last night. hey -oh. But that got it out. So, I don't know. For whatever, if there's some, if you have some good reason for shooting uh, with the gas system turned completely off, I guess go for it. But uh, I didn't really pick up that much of an auditory benefit. And uh, as you saw, I just had to butt stroke this gun to get the, uh, the casing out. But, Let's see, I think if I put it back on one, gonna get a relatively light recoil, but still get reliable function with the suppressor. Yeah, so I would definitely say if you're gonna be shooting this gun suppressed, put it in one. And here's one thing. If, I don't know if you guys have ever shot an AR a DI AR with a suppressor on it, but son of a bitch, I mean, you get hot debris in your face. That is pretty much completely eliminated with this piston AR. I'm getting no debris, no blowback. This is actually really comfortable to shoot and it's hearing safe. So that is one of the huge benefits of having a piston fired AR with a suppressor. So that was at one, gas setting one. While that same ammo just ran perfectly 
with the suppressor, you saw it just barely hang up unsuppressed. So the suppressor really does add some back pressure that helps kick those rounds out. So the SR762 at 8.6 pounds, it's kind of a hog. It's a little on the heavy side, like my ex-girlfriend. And that said, when you add a stainless steel suppressor to the end, it makes it a little bit harder to shoot because you're putting a lot of weight out in front of you. But that said, it's still manageable. All right, let's just rip with this thing, see how it does. God, that's nasty. I mean, for a piston gun and a 308, the recoil's manageable even on setting two. It feels a lot worse, actually, uh, prone than it does standing. So for those of you in the market for a piston-operated 308, I, with no hesitation, can tell you to at least check out the Ruger SR762. Why is that? Well, it's got excellent build quality. It performed very well. It gives you access to all the AR aftermarket parts. The SR762 itself comes with great features out of the box, including three 20 round Magpul mags, a nice soft case, front and rear sights, a hog grip. It does have the shitty old standard collapsible mil spec stock but we all know that's easy to fix. And most of us will be purchasing a piston operated 308 because we want something clean to run with a suppressor. And the SR762 does that very well. You have four options for your gas regulator from zero being completely off all the way to three being the largest opening. And another thing, the SR762 is very reasonably priced. Whereas a lot of piston operated 308s are upwards of $2,000, and you have the SCAR Heavy, of course, being $2,600, $2,700. You can pick up one of these. I've seen them pretty often for $1,700 and less. Some of them even in the $1,500 to $1,600 range. Now, that's a pretty good deal for any 308, especially a piston-operated one that comes with the sorts of features that the Ruger includes. In conclusion, those of you in the market for a piston-operated 308 definitely give the SR762 a hard look. Thanks for watching. Thanks to our subscribers. And thank you to our sponsor, Ventura Munitions, as usual. See you guys next week. Hey guys, it's Alex again with TFP TV. Hope you enjoyed that video. Um, if you did, we've actually just launched a Patreon page. If you could consider donating a dollar or two a month, it would really help us out and allow us to continue doing this. And uh, we like doing it and we hope you enjoy watching the videos. Until next time.